You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menunos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Nashville After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Nashville After Show. Awesome. Hey guys, we're here doing another After Buzz TV show for your favorite show, Nashville. This is season two, episode five, called Don't Open That Door. And wow, they opened a lot of doors <laughs> tonight. Um, I'm your host, JJ Jorgens, and I'm joined here tonight with... Hey everyone, Violet Kanyan. Hi everyone, I'm Marissa Serafini. We have a special guest, Marissa, here tonight. <laughs> we're missing yeah. Keaton and Whitney. Hey guys, we Aww. miss you. And But we're very happy to have Marissa here tonight. Yes, thank you for having me. I love the show, and so I'm so glad I get to actually speak it. Speak about this episode with you guys. Yay! And we have Steven in the booth. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, let's dive right into all the hot hookups this time. Mm, there was oh, a few. My goodness gracious, it happened. Zoe, 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 I'm so disappointed. I can't even begin to describe how upset <laughs> I am. Uh, yeah, what do you guys think about that? We kind of knew it was going to happen, though. They let it up last episode, and then... Every scene we saw those two together, Gunner and Zoe, they were like, oh, they're getting closer and closer. Mm -hmm. And then that finally happened, and you knew it was going to come. Yeah. It was inevitable. I'm sure Keaton's cheering out there somewhere. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> yeah, but okay. I just think this is totally wrong. It's just so bad. I, you just can't do that to your best girlfriend. And, I mean, and not only, not, I mean, I can... <sighs> Not that I condone it at all, but maybe if it was like a slow burn and they like work together and this relationship grew, but the fact that they just pretty much hit it right away, I, I don't have any, I don't. That was so fast and she totally broke the girl code. Yeah, Come on. totally. But the thing I think that makes me even more upset is that I can actually see some chemistry between them. So that makes me even like crazier. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with you. I definitely way more chemistry than with them than with Deacon. <laughs> I, and the lawyer. Uh, but anyway, we'll talk about that later. Um, I think the thing that made me sad, though, is I always loved, I thought there was so much chemistry with Scarlett and Gunner. And not only when they were singing, but also just when they were together. Mm -hmm. So I was really bummed to kind of see. That's true. Yeah. First split second, I thought she was going to hook up with Avery, and I was going to be like, okay, great. Yeah. You know, but that didn't happen. Yeah, I no. like that. And like what I didn't like from the, the trailer at the end is that we see that Scarlett then hooks up with Avery, it looks like. Like, oh my god. Like, we don't know. Day. We don't know yet. But uh, I really I, I don't want to see that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just upset cuz that was so fast. I'm like, no, you don't mm -hmm. do that to your best friend. Mm -mm. Bad girl. <laughs> bad, 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 bad girl. <laughs> Zoe, Chaley. <laughs> Um, and so she was here and yes, she knew about it, she too. She sat on that couch right there. Yeah, she we knew about it. She was it. like, yes. no, we're there just friends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. We knew Fooled by that us. look in her eye. Well, yeah. we, well, we she didn't quite. Yeah. She, didn't yeah. <laughs> she looked like she was going to be up to trouble. Mm -hmm. So what do you, how do you guys feel about Deacon and his lawyer hookup? It's even more, I mean, it just keeps getting more and more awkward. It's just like the stupidest relationship I've ever seen in my <laughs> life. And it's just so unnecessary. Like, ugh. It is. It's Deacon on a rebound. He, he just went through a bad accident, and then he realizes his career is kind of going down the toilet a bit. <laughs> he needs some comfort, so I can understand why he's clinging on to the first girl that comes into his mm -hmm, life who would true. show any interest. Mm -hmm. But I think it's just a rebound. Yeah, I mean, I, I, not that I don't like it, but I don't think it's necessary, like yeah. you said about it. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I would have liked to just see, I, I just don't see the chemistry between mm -hmm. those two. <laughs> and I would have just liked to have like, they said in this episode today that you just need to take some time by yourself, you know, and I would have, that, that would have been fine with yeah, me to have him not exactly. be hooking up with anybody for a while. Maybe but. him, like, getting more into Scarlett's career, helping her out. Even with the media thing, he could have been there and kind of mm -hmm. trained her not so much to do exactly what the publicist said and not to do 
kind of jumping forward in the episode, but and not to do um, what Layla told her to do, mm-hmm. and kind of you know found that balance for her because he's been through it and he wasn't there because he was hooking up with the mm-hmm. lawyer lady. I know. <laughs> yeah. And, and to go off of that, he could spend this time that he's, you know, focusing on himself. He's kind of like kind of self-pitying himself mm-hmm. right now. He could take that time and energy into something productive and helping Scarlett advance her career yeah. and help because he's been through all that. So mm-hmm. I think he just needs to re- rearrange his priorities mm-hmm. a little bit. Yes, I agree with you. And it was nice. I mean, not that we want him working in the guitar shop, but just like helping out that guy who's interested. He has so much knowledge that he could really, if he wanted to just take a, a did want to take a break right. from being on stage, could use his skills and expertise to do a lot of different things to help people out. And we saw but, him playing the piano, and he's really good. Mm-hmm. So he's not just, you know, a one instrument kind of guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was probably good. And piano is actually a really good instrument to play to help with right. the hand mm-hmm. muscles too. I'm like, you don't have to start off back into guitar. You could mm-hmm. use other instruments. Mm-hmm. So I liked how they showed his, more of his talents because mm-hmm. I don't think we ever saw Deacon on a piano. Yeah, uh-huh. maybe. No, uh, uh-uh. I like that. That was fun. That was definitely probably my favorite moment of the whole episode. I love those two singing together, too. I thought he sounded great with Scarlett. She always mm-hmm. sounds great with whoever she's, <laughs> she yeah, sings totally. with. But I thought it was a really sweet moment to have that. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> but I, I do like how Deacon, even though he's still worried about his career, he is slowly realizing when he's trying to help Scarlett, mm-hmm. yes, this is something you... Uh, you should learn and mm-hmm. want to know because the audience is there and it's a whole new experience. So he's kind of tr- slowly convincing himself to get back into mm-hmm. the yeah. career as well. Yeah, he had definitely a sweet moment with her when he was saying, you know, yeah, you think you're frustrated with tonight and you think you don't want to be out there, but I saw your face and yeah, you'll, really miss and you'll, miss the, you'll miss it and you'll miss the, you'll miss it. You know, and it was, I like he misses it. That's what, yeah. yeah. I like to hear him finally admitting admit it. it to yeah. himself, even just to himself. Yeah, exactly. so hopefully he'll, we'll see more and more. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Sparky's having fun in the oh. back. <laughs> <laughs> Our uh, After Buzz mascot's making some noise out there. <laughs> All right, well, let's go ahead and talk about the benefit a little bit. Mm. So we did see the um, Layla sabotaging Scarlet by ripping up her cards. For oh. a second, you think, okay, first she thinks... You know, Scarlet's with Will, super awkward, but she thinks they're together, they like each other or something because they give each other a hug. And so she, for even just forgetting that, you think she's trying to help her because she's being so nice mm-hmm. about it. And mm-hmm. then it comes out that, no, she's she knows what she's doing. Uh, and she has ulter- uh, ulterior motives yeah. and, mm-hmm. like, a little shady. And then we found out that she deferred a whole year of Harvard and just having all these opportunities lined up for her, and she chose music, her music career, over something as great as education. When I, it just shows like all the decisions she'll do or actions she'll take mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. do and like get to wherever she wants to be in life, even if that does throw Scarlet under the bus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and a good twist because she did have us fooled by saying like, "Oh, well, the person who won the contest, you know, th- it didn't matter to the fans. She didn't have, she didn't always want to do it, but it doesn't matter to them." Yeah, you thought she was being all nice, and then no, nope. she's Mm-mm. bitter about mm-hmm. not winning. That totally yeah. came yeah. out, and I think when um, Scarlett said that, "Oh, I, you know." I just, this just kind of happened for her. She kind of was like, oh, her too. Great. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. She's competing with a person who never really wanted this Mm -hmm. or didn't really work for it. Well, she did work for it, but you know what I mean. Didn't expect it to come out the way because she she always wanted this. Mm -hmm. And this just happened to Scarlett. Mm -hmm. Right. So their two levels of where they're at in their career are completely different. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, but yeah. I do but, love that Will called her out. I oh, was yeah. Like cheering about that. That, that was, was freaking awesome. I totally agree. Great. I agree. I thought Will's sometimes such a pushover, yes. you know, and such a mm-hmm. Mr. Want to just go for the success himself. Yeah. That that's I, when he first like was looking at her on the line and realizing right away that mm-hmm. that's who set her up. I thought, oh, that, that's good. And then, yeah, I was cheering when he loved it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Awesome. And I, I think it was also a little questionable when. Uh, it, Layla went up to Will and just like hugged her. Oh, <laughs> hugged gosh. him. And like, uh, was that really sincere? Yeah. And like, you, I think 
normally you first say hi and then just <laughs> yeah. hug and embrace right after a big performance, not just go up and like, oh yeah, we're best friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're at that point. She's well, trying to show every female, even Juliet, that hey. Where we might be a thing. Like, yeah. We're that close. Yeah. Well, and which is now what Jeff and them went to. Um, um, yeah. Yeah. Do we have. Sure. I think we might have a caller. Maybe. Caller, you're on the line know. with Nashville After Buzz TV. Hello. Hi, this is Jordan. Hey, Jordan. Hi. How are you? Hi, ya? Jordan. Hey, how are y'all? Good. How are yeah. you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm I'm doing good. I finished all the midterm stuff last week, so I can finally call in and chat with you guys. About <laughs> awesome. Days. So, what did you think about the episode tonight? Um, well, I was listening uh, to the show live, of course, and I, I think that I just left off with you guys talking about um, how Layla kind of like screwed over Scarlett and whatnot, <laughs> and we were you guys were kind of thinking that she did that because she was kind of bitter about getting second place. But I mean, I do see it that way. But I was also kind of thinking she was just like jealous of uh, like. Scarlett and Will's relationship, like whenever they had like that like that little hug and she was like, I didn't realize you guys were so close. I kind of thought that started like the whole um, like sabotage Scarlett mission mm -hmm. in her mind. So you think whenever, she has her eyes uh, on Will? I'm sorry. So you think she has her eyes on Will? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it just further proved it more whenever she like posted like the hashtag Layla and Will. I was like this bitch is getting a head start on like starting this whole like Layla and Will fiasco like I was super mad I was like girl and like she did not have me fooled at all <laughs> I knew from like the first episode I wasn't gonna like her and um and then with, with the whole like Harvard bit when she said that she deferred a heart like a semester at Harvard I was like yeah she's a smart cookie and she knows exactly what she's <laughs> doing mm -hmm. and it just like all she it was all just like a puzzle for her I mean, I, I just knew it was going to happen. I knew, I knew. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. She's a little calculated. Yeah, and I yeah. Said, oh, yeah, yeah. Like, very... Yeah, for sure. And then, like, touching on, like, what you guys said about uh, Zoe and Gunner, I was I was feeling, like, I was feeling what you guys were saying. Like, I was like, no. But in a way, I was like, yes. Because they were just like, I don't know, they were just giving me everything. Like, <laughs> so I'm you like them Gunner. Together. I'm such a Gunner and Scarlet, like, you know, fan, but I was, like, I was just rooting for them. I was, like, please go ahead, because I think that Avery is kind of setting this up. I think that's why he, like, suggested that Zoe be the female voice. I was like, Avery, I know what you're doing. You're trying to put Gunner and Zoe, uh, yeah, Gunner and Zoe together so that you can have Scarlet to yourself. Yep. Like, there are a lot of very calculated moves from all the, like, you know, characters tonight. They're all really smarter than I thought. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're right. Cause he, mm -hmm. Yeah, because he really pushed that when Gunner was like, no, I don't think that'd be good. And you when know? they were making eye contact, Avery was, like, looking yeah. at both of them yeah. like, yes, this he is was working. That. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, and then he left there, you know. Yeah, he got yeah, out and gave him some yep. room. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then, like, with the whole, like, I'm over Jeff. Like, he's got to go. Somebody's got to do something with him. <laughs> like, he's really on my nerves. Uh, um, yeah, I think I, Jeff's like, bothering as far everyone. As, like, the, oh, go ahead. I, I'm sorry. I, I think Jeff's bothering everyone. Yeah. <laughs> he's just an a-hole. Yeah, he's, he's never nice. Yeah, he's no. always being mean. <laughs> horrible for me. Like, I'd rather watch The Lawyer and... Oh, whoa! Decent. That bad, I don't huh? know about that one. <laughs> okay, that's just me. That's just me making a low blow. Like, let's get it back. I mean, you know that we we enjoy the drama, but like, yeah. Because without the drama, what would you what would you watch? And other than Deacon and the Lawyer, but uh -huh. so true. Uh, he's just one of those characters that I want to go away. <laughs> I know we wouldn't have anything okay. to talk about if they weren't right. stirring this up for us like this. <laughs> well, oh, we yeah. appreciate you calling exactly. us in again. Oh, yeah, 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 no problem. I'll, like I said, I'll try to call again, uh, you know, every week. You guys are doing fantastic, so uh, keep it up. All right, well, thank, thank you for listening. Have a good week. All right, y'all, have a good night. Okay, bye. Bye. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. totally, I wanted to mention that I totally saw it, too. Mm -hmm. Completely agree with Jordan. Avery completely set that up. He knows exactly what he's doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with you too. I'm glad he brought up that yeah. point because, like you said, he could sit there and see him, like, oh, like watching them yeah. eyeing each other and knowing, like, oh, my little yeah, plan is working. Exactly. Yeah. At first, you would think, like, oh, he's probably thinking, oh my gosh, what's happening? But no, yeah. he's 
yeah. he knows what he's doing. He wants Scarlett. Well, of course he does, because mm-hmm. otherwise, as an ex-boyfriend, he could have been a little more, like, protective of Scarlett, being like, right. oh, you know, mad that he was going to be getting close to somebody while she was away. I mean, I know they're not together now, but still, there would be kind of that protective, yeah. you know, and mm-hmm. now he's like, he wants... He wants he in wants there. He wants Gunner out of the picture. <laughs> yeah. And he even turns to, uh, he even turns down Juliet. Yeah. Because oh, she yeah. actually makes a sincere apology to him, oh. kind of breaking that friendship a little bit. But then he Avery turns down Juliet, so that even goes to show he really does maybe want Scarlet back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, let me ask you, do you think that Scarlet has feelings for Avery as more than friends, or was that just a... Uh, one time, just a, yeah, yeah, because that was at the uh, Blue Bluebird Cafe, right? They mm-hmm. sang. To, oh no, they were sitting together, and then mm-hmm. Gunner came in. They sang together, but um, yeah, I mean, I thought for a second Scarlet might be getting those feelings back for Avery, mm-hmm. but I feel like she's so past that. I hope she's so yeah. past mm-hmm. that. Because I think at the near the end of the season one, we saw them kind of rekindling that mm-hmm. romance at the end when Avery's like giving that spatula and whatnot as a mm-hmm. present. So, but I think because of Scarlett's new career going on, she has so much thing that really Avery's the last person she's thinking of. We mm-hmm. really haven't yeah. seen a lot of scenes of them together, so we don't know where their relationship really stands. Mm-hmm. And I'm sorry, did I say, do you, I think I'm, did I say, I meant to say, do you think Juliet, when she apologized, do you oh. think, I think I said that wrong, I'm sorry, do you think she just has friendship feelings for Avery, or do you think that she maybe wanted to see if something more after she would apologize? I kind of think mm. it is just friends with Juliet. I feel like she finally realized, oh, that was my only friend mm-hmm. yeah. in the world, other than the people who work for her. So she's like, when um, the head, Luke guy <laughs> said that about her and she heard and she was like wait I said the kind of the same thing about Avery it must have mm-hmm. really hurt somebody who like you think is really being genuine with you and then you hear them say something so I really feel mm-hmm. that was genuinely a friend thing and Juliet being Juliet she needs a guitarist that she's comfortable with and Deacon yeah. already turned her down so who's next but Avery mm-hmm. so she kind of I feel like being Juliet was genuine, but <laughs> needed something back, so it was kind of a double thing. Yeah, there's always a little piece that helps yeah. her out in her, her actions. <laughs> totally. uh, yeah, I, I completely agree. Because <laughs> I think when, after her whole big, not to jump ahead of a little bit, but after her whole award honor thing that she went to Avery, and then she realized that, yeah, I think she, just having that happen to her just put her in that nice phase that she comes mm-hmm. in and out of. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Brief in yeah. and out. Her, her, her ebb and flows of nice. <laughs> I, I was actually surprised to see her do something nice mm-hmm. right after that because I thought after that happened we were not going to see nice Juliet for a while. Yeah. <laughs> we were going to see some nasty Juliet. But I was excited. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know. I kind of thought she might do one of you know, big soap opera move, wiping off that desk with all of her right, <laughs> and awards, you know, and then throw a big fit. Too. Oh my gosh. But, that would have been fun to see. Yeah. <laughs> I would have liked that too, a little tantrum. <laughs> yeah. But, well, um, all right. So, well, we found out also at the concert. So, Raina gets called up to stage and she gets called out and put on the spot to see if she could sing again. It was such so. a big moment for her and she kind of did overshadow. Uh, Juliet's moment being invited mm-hmm. into the Grand Ole Opry, but yeah, I, th- I thought that was such a, the perfect stage for her to finally mm-hmm. sing. Like the Grand Ole Opry in country is liter- iconic. Yeah, mm-hmm. you can't you can't get any bigger than that. No. So I f- yeah, it was just perfect. Well done. <laughs> I, I I liked how that did happen because you know if you're afraid and whatnot, and sometimes you just gotta get thrown in the deep end and mm-hmm. see if you swim. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I loved how they set that up for Random because she's questioning herself throughout this whole episode if she can sing or not based on anxiety mm-hmm. and stress. But she never really left and yeah. she never really lost her voice. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. And I'm glad they actually mentioned that the singing coach was there and she was saying it's, you know, it's a lot 
to do with anxiety and stress mm -hmm. rather than your actual vocal cords because had they not mentioned that she was on stage and she could all of a sudden sing it would have yeah. been a little a little much even for TV so I'm glad they mentioned that. yeah I totally agree with you I thought before it might come that she might find her voice when Deacon confronted her because because it was nice to see that he was worried mm -hmm. about her when he finds out the news from Juliet and goes right over there and so yeah. it was again another anytime those two are on screen together I freaking love it like <laughs> oh, they had so such great. a short scene but just their emotions and their yes. eyes and you know them both saying and her saying you know that he can't let go of the music which mm -hmm. I loved it <laughs> so anyway I thought she might he, he might put her on the spot to sing there in front of her but I liked the way they did it because I did like having the room like singing the songs mm -hmm. oh my with god her, am I the only one who got like, emotional no I <laughs> yeah. was great and to have yeah. a whole audience in front of you encouraging yes. you to keep singing and mm -hmm. keep going on that's even better mm -hmm. that, that was awesome yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Can, um, can I just mention that the Luke guy is supposed to be Luke Bryan, and that was made obvious when Raina <laughs> came on stage and said, I was just going to crash your party. Yeah. <laughs> Luke single. Totally. And he kind of had that Luke thing going on with a, you know, button down, tucked in. Mm -hmm. uh, I was just waiting for a baseball cap. Yes. Yeah. I was like, no, yeah. Luke does not. No. Luke Bryan he does not work out that. with hats. He wears the baseball hat. Uh, and really he would that. never be that mean to another singer, I knew no. about Juliet. Yeah. I really wish they would have got that <laughs> him on there. Though, how nice would that have been? Ooh, that would have been awesome. Okay, Deacon and Luke Bryan on the same show. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. I think Bee would buy tickets to that. Right. <laughs> Woo, too much to handle. So good. All right. <laughs> Anything left on the benefit show? Oh, um, Will, Will singing. Yeah. yeah. That was awesome. Um, I like that Julia. I don't know. I felt like, again, she was trying to get. Juliet 2.0, Layla, <laughs> yeah. um, to have less time on stage. But it was nice that she invited Will out. And I thought that was yeah. Her strategy, her tactic was so smart. Oh especially in the music industry, be like, um, I'm having sold out concerts. Whoever I choose or you choose, if be it from your label or not, they're going to get amazing yeah. press and promotion. Yeah. So think about that. I like to see it too. I like, because nobody really stand, I mean, they're all kind of quiet, don't really stand up to Jeff, you mm -hmm. know, and I like to see him get a little taste of his own medicine and not really know how to handle her because yeah. she was exactly right. So what's he yeah. going to say? You know, and I actually do like how she picks on Layla. I <laughs> like, love it. Oh, because so now good. we know she deserves it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and that also goes to show that maybe Juliet's feeling a little threatened too in cutting down her yeah. her minutes on stage. Mm -hmm. She would do that and to throw in another male mm -hmm. to yeah, level she's out the estrogen level. With, yeah, she's not competing with guys. She's yeah. competing with another female. So. Exactly. Uh, and the thing I got to point out, going back to Jeff, y you notice everyone else around Jeff, like Raina and Will and stuff, they're they're all tim intimidated. Jeff has power and uh, authority, but when it comes to Juliet, the first thing Jeff says is like, "What can I do for you, Juliet?" Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he's at her beck and call. Julia has power. Juliet's the only one that has power over Jeff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so she used that to her advantage. Yeah, she, I, I love how she just walks away. You know, she's like, oh, you know, like it's just it's great how she treats yeah, him. I love it. <laughs> All right, let's okay. move on to the big news with Lamar getting mm. arrested. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you think about Tandy's so, actions here, getting her own oh father arrested? Okay. If you're going to have the balls to go and turn your father in, you don't turn around and then pretend that, oh, Daddy, I'm here for you now. No, okay. No. Yeah. Oh, I freaking hated that. I didn't <laughs> like how they ended that episode kind of like that because I think had they ended the episode with Lamar getting arrested, that would have been great. They'd be mm -hmm. like, oh, no. And Raina's reaction to it, seeing her father getting arrested after she just asked him for $20 million. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. she just told Jeff off. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. That was bad timing on Raina's part. <laughs> so I think the episode would have ended better. Uh, at his arrest, but then I realized there's another 10 minutes left. But I don't think that. <laughs> yeah, they should. Yeah. They should have saved the, it for the next yeah, episode. I, I totally agree. It would have been more of a cliffhanger then. Yeah, exactly. mm -hmm. yeah. I definitely agree with you on that one too. But yeah, Tandy, and and then Tandy has like no. She can't tell Raina mm -hmm. anything about oh, it. She's like, 
Oh, you you asked him for money. Oh, okay. <laughs> what a move to not, I mean, to agree with that. I mean, we saw at the beginning of the episode, she agrees that I won't talk to the family about anything, won't say anything, but it's like that. To not, to, one thing to be so mad at your dad, to, but she knew that this was going to affect Raina and everyone else. Exactly. So to not care about Raina or your nieces or anyone that's going to be affected she, by this huge, right. I mean, they have their grandfathers got put in jail. That's, I mean, it's huge. Yeah. And yeah. She, she took it off. At, she took it on as, oh, I'm protecting, you know, she's clearing herself. But she's not thinking about her sister. Yeah. She's not thinking about her, her niece's father being involved mm -hmm. in any of it or anything like that. So there's so many more people involved, like you're saying. And she just, I don't think she thought it through very yeah. well. And I think Tandy's still bitter about Lamar from last season demoting her mm -hmm. for that. So there are so many reasons why she was just in it pretty much for selfish reasons yes. to take Lamar down. Yeah. And to think that she still wouldn't say anything to Reyna when Reyna said she asked her dad for money to be like, hey, think about it for a little bit. You know, don't tell Jeff anything so I'll get yeah. the money. No, she didn't say anything and now Reyna has dug herself a deep hole. Yeah. Oh, You're right. Yeah. She could have said something without yeah. giving away what, you know, she's not supposed to talk about. Mm -hmm. She definitely could have given her a mm -hmm. little nudge in the right direction. <sighs> Yeah, so some hippie, like, um, would you consider anyone else first rather than your own family? Yeah. yeah. Because you mean, know from Lamar, with his past agreements with anybody that he gets into business with, that there are always st strings attached. Right. And, and it's, always strings attached. And it's always dirty business, like it's, Teddy mentioned. So. Exactly. She could have done something. I wouldn't go, yeah. go to Lamar for that. Right. I yeah. thought that was interesting how Raina first goes to Lamar and asks for that money. I was like, this is weird that they're having this somewhat sincere conversation about uh, Raina's career and then Lamar says the line of like, I'm so glad that I'm part of your uh, business choice or whatever, something mm -hmm. along those lines. Mm -hmm. And like, all of last season that you were totally against her career and now you're right. agreeing? Yeah. I, who, who I didn't else? believe that. Who else could she have asked? I mean, the only person I think is who would have that kind of money, Juliet. Juliet. But I don't know. Who else? Yeah. I don't know who she could have asked. Jeff. Huh. Wait. Well, that one, oh she didn't God. do much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. That would go right yeah. back. That would go right. <laughs> yeah, Well, I do love to see Lamar back because it's like we didn't see so much of him mm. in the first, you know, few episodes. And he, I just like that powerful character that's always in there kind of stirring things up. You know, even mm. it was nice to see him go into Teddy's office. Yeah. And Teddy, again, has his balls again being, you know, standing right up to, to <laughs> Lamar. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys think that he went to Teddy because he might not have the 20 million? Because that's what I thought for a second when he walked into the office to talk to Teddy. I thought maybe he doesn't have the money anymore and he wants to ask Teddy. I mm -hmm. thought it was because of what Teddy said, like you, your name is like ruined here and you're just uh, trying to get back in, you know, to get some good graces and get some yeah. things going. Because he had said he has business in every other yeah. city. Except so, his own. Yeah. <laughs> That makes sense. But, but it, it is kind of interesting for Teddy because Lamar did fund everything for him. And yeah. now all of a sudden he's like, Mr. I'm, I want that favor back. But when has yeah. Teddy been a great guy? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and where was Peggy? Hey, I was just going to say, but at least we didn't have to see Peggy tonight. Oh, thank God. <laughs> that, that is such a treat. I know. That, that was refreshing that she <laughs> wasn't that was there. That nice. <laughs> Oh, I can see if I have it. We did have a, we did have a follower who sent me something that <laughs> said, uh, oh. "Oh, but but going back <laughs> to uh, when Lamar is getting arrested and Teddy just has that smirk on his face, <laughs> I'm like, oh, made me think that he had something to do with right, arrest, yeah. not Tandy, not Tandy's investigation. That mm. he went, he used his sources <laughs> to to dig up things Dang. when he, because Teddy, we, we find in the episode, Teddy tells Lamar. Uh, whatever business you do is dirty. So I think mm -hmm. probably right after that conversation, he called up his people and be like, hey, check him out. I'm sure he did. I mean, I think that he would, but I, I, I think that, um, I mean, she's definitely to blame for her. Yeah. I think. It'd be interesting if she's It might not. be both. Yeah, it could yeah. be really interesting. Yeah. Here was what uh, Maverick Kemper14 said. Thank God evil Lamar Wyatt is back. Maybe he'll kill Peggy. Also, <laughs> I, pre also I predicted Avery and Juliet. Yeah, that one made me uh, That one made me laugh, so thanks for sending so, that in. That is kill awesome. Peggy. <laughs> yeah. While we're on that, thank you to everybody who has gone on our iTunes and rated and comment. We love seeing your feedback and your comments, and we love, like, 
things that we miss that you guys bring up to talk about. So please keep going to iTunes and check us out on AfterBuzzTV.com and give us your feedback and things you want to hear us talk about (laughs) and rate our show. (laughs) All right. Yes, I'm glad Peggy I, wasn't in this episode. <laughs> she, like, just seeing her for maybe two minutes last episode, it just made me so mad. I'm like, right? why are you here? Yeah. Just makes us no. angry. Oh, and speaking of comments, somebody did say, you know how last time we said with that pregnancy test, they said that it was not an actual, and I don't know enough about this because I have not been in this <laughs> in my life, but that it was a, uh, uh, a time that could tell you when you were ovulating and when oh. you were able to get pregnant, and they said that's what she was testing. Oh, that makes sense. So then she would hop into bed with them and bada bing, bada boom, yeah. she's pregnant. Mm. So yeah, there you go. I didn't, uh, we didn't catch so that conniving. one. But yeah. <laughs> evil, evil, evil. Yeah. I'll have to get him. All right. Anything in this one we haven't talked about yet? Uh, well, I, I like how Avery and uh, Gunnar are kind of buddy buddy again, that they're performing. Nice. Yeah, but I think it's, I, going back to what we were saying earlier, I do think it's calculated on mm-hmm. Avery's uh-huh. part. But it was nice to see. It was nice to see. They it was sound really good together. Exactly. We yeah. were all shocked when the music started playing. We're like, what? These what two the see together? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think it might get into a little prediction territory, but now that Avery has the keys to Juliet's studio, they're uh-huh. going to get recording mm-hmm. the, his song. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think so, too. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, then let's go ahead and move on into news and gossip. After Buzz TV News. All right. I just only had a couple of things. Um, this was on just Jared, but it had Hayden enjoying some Burger King satis fries. <laughs> uh, it also, she was actually coming from the 2013 Environmental Media Awards, and she was honored with the Futures Award, which recognizes younger entertainers for their potential to be environmental activists. She had a funny quote um, where she said, I mean, the fact that I'm 5'2 and my boyfriend is 6'6 six, six is not going to help the environment. <laughs> It's not, and twerking is not going to save the environment. It speeds it up. Um, uh-huh. <laughs> that was a little funny. But, uh, and then the other notes was that she, um, we, we all know that she recently just got engaged. Well, it came out that she in- designed her the engagement ring. So she, it's six carat emerald cut diamond, and she designed it all herself. So it's oh, wow. a Fabulous. stunner. Yeah, <laughs> she was showing it off this week with that and a tight orange mini skirt and a mm. see-through strap, or not strapless, crisscross. So she got a lot Lots of attention with the outfit Ooh, and the aw. ring this week. Oh, nice. And that was all I had. Did anything? Um, it, I had a funny thing I saw on Instagram. Shaylee Rose, um, <laughs> she posted this really funny Instagram shoot. But uh, this is what my dad said about tonight's episode. And she put a conversation where her dad said, OMG, I'm blind. And she responded, ha, sorry. And her dad said, hope you called your grandfather. I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> <That's> cute. <laughs> cute, cute. <laughs> All right, well, then let's go ahead and get into predictions. And now, you're after Buzz TV predictions. Who wants to start? I have one little prediction. I think that um, going off of what you said earlier about Avery using Juliet's studio, I think she, he and he's going to invite Scarlett in there Mm -hmm. and that's how they're going to rekindle their flame and they're going to record a song and um who knows maybe he'll steal one of gunner's songs and make it say it's his good one good one (laughs) do you think avery because most of season one avery has been kind of a a hole Mm -hmm. but we've seen him come around he's kind of nice nowadays do you think he's he would do a low blow like that to once an a hole, always. An <laughs> <laughs> All right, he's got it in him, so it'll come out soon. Uh, well, I, I don't think this lawyer and deacon will mm. last long. Oh, let's hope Complete not. Complete yes. rebound. The end. Yeah, I think because deacon was slowly convincing himself about the audience, the live, you know, the live audience that you you love and miss, he'll go back to Julia and be like, yeah, I want an honest tour. Uh, on her tour, slowly get himself back into playing guitar and stuff. I I was going to actually join that one, too, because I thought, okay, we started to see him sing at the end, Mm -hmm. and I think he's going to, he is really missing it, and he's Mm -hmm. going to want to be back at a part of it. I hope so. He's so hot Mm -hmm. on stage. Yeah. Where where do you think (laughs) Reyna is going to get the money for 
Mm, that's another good one. For the whole buyout. I don't think she is, and I think she's going to have to apologize to Jeff. Yeah, I think she's going to be in trouble, too, because I don't think there's anywhere else she can get the money. Mm. No, it'll be interesting. She pools her <laughs> funds with uh, Deacon. I don't know. Mm. Well, we'll maybe, stay tuned. <laughs> all right, well, thank you all for watching tonight. Where can you find you guys at? Uh, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook at Violet Canyon, K-A-N-I-A-N. And you can follow me on Twitter and on Instagram at Serafini TV. And I'm at Twitter and Instagram and uh, Facebook, JJ Jorgens, and a blog at TomGirl.tv. Yay. Yay. All right. <laughs> Thank you, guys. We'll see you next week. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.